In this video, we will show you how to use Carousel to display a selection or gallery of products with beautiful cards. Each card can have an image of your product, the product name or title, and description, and buttons for a customer to click. We will first build a carousel by adding product cards manually. Later, we will show you how to create dynamic carousel using product data listed in a Google Sheet. Finally, we will show you the most convenient and efficient way to build a carousel with high flexibility. Here we have a simple carousel demo using a pizza bot as an example. Let us take a look at the carousel. We have added three cards, which display three types, vegetable, white and meat pizzas. For each card, we can either upload an image or place an image link to show the product. We can enter the product name or title, and also add the product description. We can add buttons for each card as well. In this case, we have a button for the customer to click to order a specific pizza. Let us test it now. The AI assistant greets the customer and provide two buttons. We click on the order a pizza button. Next the bot asks if the customer wants to see the pizza products. Let us click yes. We can see the carousel showing three pizzas with product image, name and description. We can click the button to order a pizza. Finally, the bot says thanks for ordering. The carousel shows beautiful product cards and provides good user experience. But if we want to add more products, we will have to add cards onto the carousel, which is not convenient. In order to solve this problem, we will show you how to use dynamic carousel to display many products. In this demo, the first part is same as that of the previous demo. Here we store our product data on a Google Sheet, where we can add or delete our data easily. We use an API block to fetch data. In the last video, I have shown how to use a Google Sheet to update data, and we can get data from the Google Sheet using an APT step. If interested, please watch my previous video for details. In the API block, we choose Get to take data with this URL. In the parameter section, we enter the ID and the sheet name from our Google Sheet. We then capture the response, which is the JSON data, and save it in a variable. The next step is a condition block. Basically we have three conditions, three cards, two cards, and one card conditions. In the three cards condition, we have the expression of all types dot length larger than two, which means we have three or more products. Under this condition, we will show a carousel with a collection of three cards. But if you want to show four cards or even more, you just need to change the condition expression correspondingly. In the action section, we set variables to save products for each cards. For example, we use all types dot shift to take one product from the data and save it to the carousel card one variable. After this, the length of all types array will decrease one. We do the same thing for card two and card three. Similarly, in the two cards condition, we have the expression of all types, the length equal to two. If we have two products, this condition will be satisfied. In the actions, we take data from the array and save it to variables for card one and card two. In the one card condition, if we have one product, the length of the array is equal to one, and we take the data from the array and save it to the variable for card one. Next, we use set blocks to set our variables. For example, we set card one name using the carousel dot name and set the image and content variables, which we will use later to populate the card parameters. We do the same for card two and card three. After we get the data, we use a carousel block to display our products. In this case, we have three cards. In the first card, we place the image variable and display the product image. In the title box, we put the product name variable. The content variable will display the product description. We also have two buttons. One is for the customer to order a pizza, where we use the variable to display the name of the pizza. If customer click this button, the pizza bot will go to the next block and show thanks for ordering to end the conversation. The other button is to display more pizza in the next run. If the customer click this button, it will go to the condition block and show the rest of our products. We repeat these settings for card two and card three. If we have two products, we can set the name, image, and content variables for card one and card two as well. In the carousel block, we display two cards. We populate the image link, title, and description with our image, name, and content variables. The two buttons are exactly same as previous ones in the three card carousel. If we have only one product left, we just need to set the variables for card one. And we do the same for the one card carousel block. These blocks form a loop to dynamically show the products using the carousel block. For instance, if we have five products, the bot will check that the first condition is satisfied and it will show three card carousel. After this, we will have two products left and the second condition is satisfied, so the two card carousel will be shown. If there is one product left in the array, of course the one card carousel will be shown to display the product. We are going to test the demo. 
We receive the greeting from the pizza bot and we click the button to order a pizza. We want to see the products and we click the yes button. Now we see the carousel displaying three products with images and buttons. We want to see more. Now we see two products, which is right, because we totally have five products in our Google Sheet, and all the products have been shown so far. If we click to see more, it says no more pizza to show because the array is empty. This dynamic carousel works fantastically. We can update products in our Google Sheet without the need to change the voice flow canvas. It can automatically fetch the data and display the product to our customers. Next, we will show you even a better solution using a custom action block combined with a little simple JavaScript. In this demo, the first part is same as the previous one, which has an API block to fetch data from our Google Sheet. After we receive the data, we use a JavaScript step and set a variable called dynamic pizza carousel. We have the layout as carousel and set initialize cards as an empty array. Next, we have a function called get card to dynamically generate cards for the carousel. We pass four parameters to the function, which are name, image, content, and pizza selected. We set the card title as name, the card description with text set as the content parameter, and the card image URL as the image parameter. Just a reminder, we have image, title, and description in each card of our carousel, which will be populated by these parameters. The buttons have a name parameter, which we use a string of order a concatenated with the name parameter. In the request, the type is pizza selected, which is the name of the path that the bot will go to after the customer click on this button. In the payload, we pass the data pizza selected to remember which pizza the customer has ordered, which will be used later. In the for loop, we loop through the all types array, which contains all the products from our Google Sheet. We set the variables of type name as the name of one row data of the array, the image type as the image URL data from the array, and the type content as the content from the data array. We pass the parameters to the get card function, which are the name, image, content, and name again, which is the name of the pizza the customer will order. The get card function will generate one card at a time, which will be pushed to the cards array. After the for loop is done, all the products will be saved in the cards array. Finally, we use the JSON stringify function to convert it to a string. Next, we use a custom action block. We enter carousel as the name, and in the action body, we select JSON and enter our variable dynamic pizza carousel which we have obtained in the previous JavaScript step. In the paths, we add pizza selected, which is the path after the customer click the button. Make sure this stop on action is on. In the next JavaScript block, we set order type variable as last event dot payload dot pizza selected, which we have passed in the payload parameter in the previous JavaScript. Finally, the bot will show which pizza the customer has ordered. We use the variable to show the name of the pizza ordered. Let us test the bot. We click to order a pizza and we want to see the pizzas. We can see the carousel displaying five products and we click to order a pizza. The bot confirms the pizza we have ordered. In this demo, we dynamically generate our carousel and save the data to a variable and pass it as JSON to the action body of a custom action block. The carousel displays our products to the customer. This is very convenient and flexible. In summary, we have shown how to dynamically create a carousel to display products using data from our Google Sheet which gives us high flexibility to add and remove products frequently without the need of changing the assistant. When you have many products and update your products frequently, this is a preferred way to show your products to the customers. If you like this video, please subscribe and give a thumbs up. If you have any comments and suggestions, please let us know. Thank you for your support.